Is leasing right for you? You're about to find out. 30% of all new cars driven off dealer lots are leases, and it's a car transaction that most consumers really screw up, and for one simple reason. Today, you get to find out what that is. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy, and Othrub, is that the best you can do? Welcome to the home of super high intensity training on how to buy and sell new or used cars, courtesy of the Homework Guy team. When it comes to smart strategies, you just can't beat super high intensity training available to you on YouTube's best channel for car buyers. A few short years ago, leasing was at 28.7% of all vehicle transactions and setting an all time high with 4.3 million units leased. Why do so many people lease? You get to drive a new vehicle, and lease payments have run about $120 per month less than the average loan payments when you buy instead. There's one very critical mistake that many of you make when deciding on a lease, and I'm going to help make sure that you never do it again. I'll also cover eight key issues about a lease that you might have been unaware of, and who are the best candidates for leases. All of that and more in just a moment. First, a quick message from the Homework Guy team. If you're a first timer on the Homework Guy channel, consider subscribing and leaving us a comment below. Add hashtag the Homework Guy if you'd like a response directly from Kevin or one of the Homework Guy staff members. We're always glad to help our loyal followers, and the best part is there's no charge. You can also email the team at infothehomeworkguy.com with a specific question, or if you'd like a free contract review, just black out your personal information and send it to us. We'd love to hear from you. Just be aware that we do get a lot of requests, so just be patient while you wait for a response. Back to you, Kevin. All right, let's get right into it. Let's talk about who are the ideal candidates for a leased vehicle. You should be saying yes to these four things if you're considering a lease. Number one, you have expendable cash. Money that you don't mind seeing going out the window by driving a brand new car. The truth is that only people with expendable cash should be driving new vehicles, period. Number two, you want to drive a new car and trade out every two to three years. Number three, you drive between 10,000 and 15,000 miles per year. And number four, you have excellent credit. Some leases will go as low as 620 FICO score. Others are at 660 and above. Experian reports that all new leases written in the most recent quarter, those customers had an average credit score of 725. This is not to say that credit scores below 620 will never get a lease. I've heard of people getting a lease at 580. I'm simply saying that there will be big challenges with most cars on scores lower than 620, and many will just flat out say no. Now let's tackle the huge mistake that many lease candidates are making. You think a lease is something special, with a bunch of special considerations that are very different than buying a car. That understanding causes you to totally forget about everything I've taught you on this channel about buying cars. If you are purchasing the vehicle, you'd price shop and make sure the end price is a fair market price. You'd shoot for an invoice, less all the rebates, less any other reasonable discounts, and that's the number you'd finance. You'd say no to all those unreasonable dealer fees and not let the finance man smoke you with a bunch of inflated costs. You'd say no to all those product offerings that have nothing to do with the improved value of the car, but do a ton to boost dealer profits. And then you'd put 20% cash down or more, and you'd never buy that expensive $1,000 gap policy. You do all of that before you even think about interest rates and loan terms when you're buying a car. Yet on a lease, you think you should ignore all of that due diligence and just say, please quote me a lease payment on this vehicle. Man, the dealers love you when you do that. But why would you ever do that to yourself? For one reason and one reason only. You didn't know that the only difference between a lease and a purchase is how you pay for it. It's a simple difference of interest rates versus money factors, and that's about it. There are a few things you need to know about a lease, and I'll give those to you in a moment, but never forget, the key difference between buying and leasing a new car is simply how you pay for it. Always do your homework and negotiate the deal exactly the same if you intended to buy it. Exactly the same. If you always do that, every lease you sign from here on out will be much better than any lease you've ever signed in the past. With more hikes expected in future lease rates, all of this becomes very important to do. All right, assuming that you've done all of your homework, you negotiated a final price just like any other car deal, then let's talk about the eight key issues you need to know about a lease. This is not the lease dictionary, by the way, just the key issues. Number one. Leases are based on money factors, not interest rates, and you need to know how to convert them so you aren't paying an unreasonable interest rate. The Federal Trade Commission has determined that leases are not debt, so there is no debt disclosure involved in the interest rate. While you can't convert money factor exactly into interest rate, this formula will put you right on top of the number. 
Here's how you do the math. First, let's convert interest rate to money factor. If you have a known interest rate, divide your rate by 2400 to get the money factor. So, an example, a 2.9% interest rate divided by 2400 becomes a money factor of 0.0012. Now, let's flip it around. Let's say the money factor you are quoted is 0.00175. Multiply that by 2400 and you get 4.2%. Here's why this math is so important. If your bank told you that you qualify for 2.9% interest rate, why would you sign a lease with a money factor of 0.00175? You shouldn't. You should do the math for the dealer and tell them that you're already qualified for a money factor of 0.0012. Makes sense? The math helps you know exactly what money factor you deserve. If you're still not sure how to do this, we put a money factor calculator on our website to help you do the conversion. So visit thehomeworkguide.com and find the lease calculator. It does the conversion for you. Number two, the vehicle's residual value. What is it and why should you care about it? The bulk of your monthly lease payments cover the cost of vehicle depreciation. Your car's value at the end of the lease is predetermined. It's what is referred to as residual value. The residual value is the predicted value of the car at the end of the lease and it has an effect on your monthly lease payments. Cars that benefit from a high residual value tend to have lower lease payments than vehicles that depreciate quicker. At the end of your lease, you can always decide to purchase the vehicle and residual value takes all the guesswork away. It's right there on your document. I always suggest that you look at the comparable vehicles and if your residual value is higher at the time you're considering buying, well, maybe just pass on it. But if it's lower, well, your car happens to be a great buy. And the benefit is you know who's been driving it. Number three, fees, acquisition fees, and bank fees usually range from $250 up to $1,000 with luxury cars. The bank fee sometimes can be negotiable, but often it's not. It's the amount charged by the leasing company to set up the lease. It's essentially another profit source for them in addition to the finance charge that you get to pay. The disposition fee compensates the leasing company for the expenses related to cleanup and sale of the vehicle after you return it. If you're lucky, you won't be charged with this fee, but most leases do have a disposition fee ranging between $200 and $450. If you purchase the vehicle at the lease end, they might try to pin this on you anyway. I'd refuse to pay it in this case because it makes zero sense. You're keeping the car. There are other fees they can try tagging on you too, so make sure you watch the video. 11 fake fees that you can find here on this channel. All of the mentioned fees apply to leases. Number four, mileage. Excess wear and tear will cost you, although leasing companies don't usually charge for minor scratches and a less than pristine interior, although I do recommend you have your car clean at the end of the lease. The cost of each extra mile is set by the lease company and will typically range from 10 cents to 30 cents per mile, depending on the vehicle and the lease company. If you're wondering how many miles that you should select for your lease, 10,000 or 15,000, well, here's my suggestion. Get the lowest number that you think you're likely to use and then ask for the mileage rate you are being charged. If you drive over your average amount each month, just add a few extra bucks to your lease payment. Number five, state fees. Just as in a regular car purchase, you will have to pay state licensing fees. Be aware that the dealer will try to tack on document fees too. Just never pay over 75 bucks. In most states, you only have to pay taxes on a portion of the vehicle you are projected to use during the course of the lease. The taxes are included as part of your monthly lease payments, so you don't have to worry about paying anything up front. However, the rules are different from state to state. In Illinois and Texas, you have to pay sales tax on the full amount of the vehicle, and in some states, the tax is due up front. Because these laws are constantly changing, check with your local DMV to find out the particular situation in your state. Number six, security deposit. Not all leases require a security deposit and the ones that do sometimes can be negotiated away. The security deposit is usually greater than or equal to your monthly lease payment and is due at signing and will be refunded at the end without excessive wear and tear on the vehicle. You should try to negotiate to remove the security deposit if possible, especially if you have good credit or you've leased from the same company in the past. Number seven, down payment. It's optional in some lease agreements, while others require between $1,500 and $5,000. A down payment on a lease works much the same as on a car loan. While some car shoppers have been duped by dealers into believing that putting cash down isn't necessary, I totally disagree. Put 20% down on the leased portion of the car. Number eight, first month's lease payment. 
Car leasing is similar to renting a house, but with a car loan, you make payments at the end of the month. Because of this, the first month's lease payment is usually due at lease signing. This catches some people off guard. Sometimes there are lease deals where the first month's payment is waived, giving you a one month discount. A couple of bonus tips. If you didn't already know, you have to carry full coverage insurance just like you do when you have a car loan. So calculate that along with all the vehicle maintenance into your added expenses for the lease consideration. Let's summarize. The key takeaway from today's video is to negotiate a lease exactly the same as a car purchase. You got that? Exactly the same. Use all the videos on this channel that make you a smarter car buyer and apply those same strategies to your next lease and you'll love the lease deals you get in the future. All right, if you appreciated the video today, consider giving us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy in your comments down below and share the video on social media with your friends and use the hashtag again. If you've watched all the videos on this channel, let us know what you've learned. How did you apply the techniques to win on your last car deal? And for those of you who'd like to say thanks for the tip, the links you see here on the window, PayPal and Cash App will be easy to find in that description box down below. I've helped millions of car buyers with videos, free car contract reviews, market updates, and much more. And we're not going anywhere. Expect us to have another new hot video out soon. Also, if you recently got a smoking hot deal in your area, share the details in the comment section below so others can benefit from your great experience. You become part of the super high intensity training everyone gets by visiting the Homework Guy channel, YouTube's best channel for car buying advice. Thanks for coming back, everyone. You guys rock. That's it for now. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.